Feel the power. Welcome to Righteous Invasion of Truth with Dr. Abel Damina. Welcome to the ever increasing world feast. I'm excited to welcome you, friends and family, right here on Facebook, YouTube, and all our social media handles. Abel Damina is my name. Listen, the truth of the word of God is, when God's word is preached and taught, God's power to save is made available. Brother Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God unto salvation. I'm honored to serve you grace today, to bring you clarity of teaching from the word of God. Invite a friend, a loved one, create watch parties, tag people, because the word is gonna come very hot and powerful today. You know, there's a mandate of God on my life to reintroduce Jesus to this generation, equipping the believer to know who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ, and what Christ can do through you. It is with that mandate in mind that this message is coming to you right now. It will change your life forever. However, remember the scripture tells us the time shall come when they shall not endure sound doctrine. The Greek word hugaino wholesome doctrine. There's an endurance required. So as you listen, please painstakingly and patiently listen to the teaching of God's word. Don't listen with a critical mind. Listen with a mind to learn. You know, Jesus said, learn of me for I am meek and lowly of heart and you shall find rest. So there's a meekness required. Brother James says, with meekness, receive the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. There's a meekness required and there's endurance required where sound doctrine is concerned. So you want to patiently follow the teachings. Most of my teachings are in a series. So get ready to follow. And if there's anything you don't understand, be patient. The teachings will continue to explain themselves until you come to a place of understanding and clarity in the knowledge of Christ. One more thing to say with you today. If you're in an area where there's no Bible teaching church, where the message of Christ like this is preached, you can start one or you can join any of our campuses. Our campuses are extension houses of our local church where brethren come together and they are fed, they are taught, they take responsibility, they pray together, they reach out to the people in their community with the truth of God's word. Our campuses are lighthouses in nations and cities and communities where believers come together and they are taught the word of God by myself. And I'm excited if you want to be a part of what we're doing around your community or you want to start one. All you need to do is shoot me a mail today, Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. And we shall guide you on what to do to either begin one campus or join another. It's not good for you to be in isolation. The Bible says, do not dismiss the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is. In prophecy, the word of God tells us that God will bring the solitary into families. You are a member of a family and there is no family that does not have a gathering. Our gathering is our assemblage to be taught, to be equipped, and to become responsible for other people's growth. It's so important, and I'm looking forward to hearing from you today. Lastly, there's a plethora of books I have written that addresses so many issues of the Christian faith. They're all on the screen. Look at this. Today, you can order for a book or two or all the set by shooting an email to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. Including today's message, you can order for the CD or the DVD. The entire essence is to nourish you, enrich you, and equip you with robust understanding of your relationship with Almighty God. I'm excited to be able to serve you. Fasting your seatbelts. Let me take you right now into a gospel adventure, into the service where the spirit of our God is already moving. Happy viewing. So we've been looking at the book of Revelation and we've been dealing with the subject of the revelation of Jesus. Revelation chapter 1 verse 1. We begin from there. The revelation of Jesus Christ. So everything we read in the book of Revelation has only one theme, the revelation of Jesus Christ. They were all targeted at unveiling the Christ and the believer in him. John 5, 39, Jesus will say, Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, but they are they which testify of me. So the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. 
All right? Now, so we, we've dealt with that foundation. And then we looked at Revelation chapter 1 from verse 4 to 6, which is doctrine, the doctrinal position of the churches that Brother John saw a revelation on. John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come. And from the seven spirits which are before his throne. Pay attention. Next verse. And from Jesus Christ, who is a faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead. So obviously, the revelation we're about to see in the book of Revelation is the revelation of the risen Lord. The revelation of the exalted, risen, exalted and glorified Lord. Remember, there is Jesus of Nazareth. That's the incarnate Christ. But when he died, that was the end of the incarnate Christ. When he rose from the dead, he rose as the first begotten or the firstborn from the dead. So our reality is the risen Lord. Our reality is the exalted Lord. Our reality is the glorified Lord. So that deals with revelation knowledge. The first begotten of the dead. And the prince of the kings of the earth. Unto him that loved us, take note of the tenses, and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Next verse. And hath made us kings and priests unto God and his father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So he now establishes the position of the seven churches, the believers, as it regards doctrine. That these people, even though he's going to be writing some things to them by revelation and by utterance and by vision, first of all, he establishes that these people are loved. Tenses, loved. Number two, they are already washed. And number three, they have been made kings and priests unto God. So he establishes that position. Now, doctrine is so important because all the teachings of Jesus and the apostles were taken from Moses and the prophets. In fact, look at the way Brother Paul will put it in Romans 16, 25. Now to him, that is a power to establish you according to my gospel. That is the preaching of Jesus Christ. The gospel is the preaching of Jesus Christ. The gospel is not the, the solving of problems. The gospel is not motivational speaking. The gospel is not business entrepreneurship. The gospel is the preaching of Jesus Christ. Jesus said the scriptures testify of me. In Luke 24, 25, he called them fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory and beginning from Moses or at Moses and all the prophets. He expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So the gospel is the message of the Christ. The gospel is the revelation of Jesus Christ. And that's what the book of Revelation is dealing with in that in that entire book now back to romans chapter 16 verse 25 the, the, the preaching of jesus christ but it is according to the revelation of the mystery the preaching of jesus christ according to the revelation of the mystery the old testament is mystery so the revelation that brother Paul communicated in the epistles, we are according to the Old Testament. Just like Jesus, beginning from Moses and all the prophets. They made reference to the Old Testament books, the canon of scripture. Now, but brother John in his revelation, first of all, took from the scriptures to establish the finished work of Christ for the believer. Before he began to talk about what he saw, what he heard, the imageries, the interaction with angels, all of that was after he has established this position for the churches in Asia. Now, that scripture now says the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. Galatians chapter 1 verse 11, pay attention. But I certify you, brethren, brother Paul is speaking to the church at Galatia, when he had already indicted them from being removed from the gospel of Christ to another, another, to a pseudo-gospel. 
a pseudo gospel it sounds like the gospel but you have to be very careful to see that the narratives of the gospel are not the same between the genuine gospel and the pseudo gospel even though they sound alike both of them talk about christ both of them talk about the finished work but the difference is that the pseudo gospel adds to what christ has done in order for what christ has done to be complete it is christ plus circumcision christ plus something the pseudo gospel now so brother paul now says to them after indicting them of 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 another gospel he said i certify you brethren that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man next verse for i neither received it of man neither was i taught it but by the revelation of jesus christ that the gospel he preached came via revelation from the old testament books the revelation of jesus christ because jesus said the old testament which is the scripture testifies of him all right so it has to be according to revelation and the revelation of jesus says that the believer has been loved the believer has been washed it is out of that love of god demonstrated that the believer is washed god commended his love towards us in that while we were yet seen as christ died for us greater love has no man than this that a man should lay down his life for his friends so the love of god is demonstrated in the sacrifice of jesus his death for mankind all right so he has loved us and it is out of that sacrificial work that he has washed us and he has made us kings and priests unto our god now so i've said that to move to the book of revelation chapter 2 from verse 1 we started dealing with the church at ephesus so watch this unto the angel of the church of ephesus right this thing said he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks i know thy works i know thy works so it's not dealing with salvation it's dealing with works and thy labor and thy patience and thou canst not bear them which are evil and hast tried them which say they are apostles and are found and are not and has found them liars that means you have you have exposed their doctrine and their doctrine contradicts the message of christ and has born and has patience and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted watch verse 4 nevertheless i have somewhat against thee because Thou hast left thy first love, proton agape. I'm going to get there in a short while. And then he now explains what first love is. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent. And we're going to do exegesis on that word repent. Because it's going to come up again. And repent and do the first works. Or else I will come unto thee quickly. And will remove thy candlestick out of his place. Except thou repent. Except thou repent. Repent. Except thou repent. In chapter 2 and 3 of Revelation, he used the word repent nine times in dealing with the seven churches. The frequency of the use of the word necessitates understanding what it means and why it was used. It was also used in the synoptic gospels. And in the service on Wednesday, we dealt with the places where it was used in the synoptic gospels. We saw that in the synoptic gospels, the, the word repent means believe. And we said John never used the word repent because John used believe, believes, or believed. But the Matthew, Mark, and Luke used the word repent for believe. Look at Luke 16, 27 to 29. Then he said, I pray thee, Father Abraham, therefore, that thou would send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren that he may testify unto them, they, lest they also come into this place of torment, the parable Jesus gave. Abraham said unto him, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. Let them hear them. Moses and the prophets. The word let them hear is translated from the Greek word akao. A-K-O-U-O. -O, which implies to heed a message. So repentance is a response to a message. It is to be persuaded by a message. Persuaded, all right? Look at Matthew 12, 41 to 42. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonas. 
and behold a greater than jonas is here they repented at the preaching of jonas the queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it for she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of solomon and behold a greater than solomon is here very instructive they repented by the preaching of jonas they repented by the preaching of jonas all right now they repented because the words they had were words of graciousness loving kindness and tender mercies jonah chapter 4 verse 2 watch this and he prayed unto the lord and said i pray thee O lord was not this my saying when i was yet in my country therefore i fled before unto tashish for i knew that thou art a gracious god and merciful slow to anger and of great kindness and repentest thee of the evil therefore it is evident why john did not use the word repent or repentance because repentance towards the gospel is to believe in the gospel please pay attention john used the word believe or believed more than all the other writers in the synoptic gospels the word repent was also used in the book of acts severally for example acts 2 38 then peter said unto them repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of jesus christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the holy ghost all right the question is why will he use the word repent all right so context will explain why he used the word repent look at verse 36 of the same chapter therefore let all the house of israel know assuredly that god had made that same jesus whom you have crucified but lord and christ whom you have crucified so this was because the jews had a false perception about christ so because they had a false perception when he spoke to the house of israel he said to them that they have to repent in this context to see christ in the right perspective to repent in this context we just read in acts 2 peter was telling the house of israel that they should move from what they imagined and thought of christ as a criminal who died and see christ in the right perspective as the savior of man the savior lord look at it that acts 2 36 therefore let all the house of israel know assuredly that god had made that same jesus whom you have crucified both lord and christ both lord and christ so he was communicating to them that their perspective of christ should be the perspective of reason exalted seated at the right hand of the father that's why i use the word repent now the word repent can also mean to agree with or to see this or to turn to this the word repent it can be used for to 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 agree with or to see this or turn to this acts seventeen thirty, and the times of this ignorance god winked at but now commanded every man everywhere to repent question to repent how watch this in context acts 17 31 and 32 because he had appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he had ordained whereof he had given assurance unto all men in that he had raised him from the dead and when they heard of the resurrection of the dead some mocked and others said we will hear thee again of this matter notice the statement when they heard that is the repentance was towards a message the repentance that they were supposed to repent was towards a message the resurrection of jesus from the dead so the word repent in this context is to believe in the resurrection of Jesus from the dead, which is the gospel, the resurrection of Jesus. Look at Acts 26, 20. But showed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coasts of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. 
What did he mean by repent and turn to God? It was for them to have faith in Christ. From Paul's words in Acts 26, to have faith in Christ. Repentance also means to turn from to another. To turn from to another. Now, in all the texts we have examined, you know, um, at no point was anyone asked to do anything as repentance. Because repentance has to do with the response of a man to a message. The instructions that a man heeds. Paul used the word metanoa. Repentance in the epistles. Two. Look at the epistles. We have seen it in Acts. We have seen it in the synoptics as a change of mind. Now look at the way brother Paul will use it in 2 Corinthians 12, 21. Unless when I come again, my God will humble me among you. And that I should bewail many which have sinned already. And have not repented of the uncleanness and fornication and lasciviousness which they had committed. He had used it earlier in the same letter in chapter 7, 2 Corinthians 7, 8, and 9. For though I made you sorry with a letter, I do not repent. Though I did repent, for I perceived that the same epistle had made you sorry, though it were but for a season. Next verse. Now I rejoice, not that you were made sorry, but that you sorrowed to repentance. For you were made sorry after a godly manner that you might receive damage by us in nothing. There he used it as a verb. It was translated from the Greek word meta, metamelomai. Metamelomai. It is spelled as M-E-T-A-M-E-L-L-O-M-A-I. Metamelomai. What he said in essence was, I expect you to change your mind about what I said. So in chapter 12, some had not changed their mindset about it. Because repentance deals with a change of mindset. It implies persuasion. It implies to be persuaded by a correction or an instruction. Repentance implies to be persuaded by a correction or an instruction. He told the same church in 2 Corinthians 13.10. Therefore, I write these things being absent. Lest being present, I should use sharpness according to the power which the Lord had given me to edification and not to destruction. The essence of Brother Paul's writings was to correct and instruct them, not to destroy, but to edify, to build them up. It is key to notice the use of the word repent in the four gospels differed from how it was used in the epistles. The way the word repent from the things we have read was used in the four gospels. It differs from how it was used in the epistles. Pay attention. Remember, it was translated from two Greek words, meta and noah. Nos is wisdom, mindset, understanding, or knowledge. The word noah implies understanding or to understand. N-O-E-O, -E -O, noah. Let's see how it was used in the New Testament. The word Noah or understand in the New Testament books. Matthew 15, 17. Pay attention. Do not ye yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the drought. Underline the word understand. Matthew 16, 9 and 11. Do you not yet understand, underline the word understand, neither remember the five loaves of the 5,000 and how many baskets you took up? 11. How is it that you do not understand, underline the word understand, is the word Noah, that I spake not to you concerning bread, that you should beware of the living of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Matthew 24, 15. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso read it, let him understand. Noah. Mark 7, 18. And he said unto them, Are you so without understanding also? Do you not perceive that whatsoever thing from without entereth into the man, it cannot defile him? Underline the word understanding. 
John 12, 40. He had blinded their eyes and hardened their heart that they should not see with their eyes nor understand, nor understand, understand with their heart and be converted and I shall heal them. Ephesians 3, verse 4 and 20. Whereby, when you read, you may understand, underline, understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Noah, Noah, Meta Noah. The Noah is what we're looking at. Look at verse 20 of Ephesians. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding above all that we ask or think, underline the word think is the same word for Noah, according to the power that worketh in us. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 desiring to be teachers of the law understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm Unders underline the word understanding the word noah in the greek lexicon is a verb it has a noun which was translated from the greek word knows n-o-u-s let's see example of how the word knows was used luke 24 25 the word knows. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe. All that the prophets have spoken. All that the prophets have spoken. Look at the word there. Understanding. Understanding. Then said unto fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Alright. Luke 24, 25. Look at Romans 7, 23 to 25. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind. I'm bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. The word mind knows. The word mind. Uh, in Luke 24, 25 is the word heart. The Romans 14, 5. One man estimate one day above another. Another estimate every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. The word persuaded. The word persuaded knows. The word persuaded in his own mind. 1 Corinthians 2.16 For what known the mind of the Lord? Underline mind that he may instruct him. But we have the mind of Christ. Underline the word mind. Mind, mind. An important text in this regard is Romans 12.2 And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The renewing was translated from the Greek word anakinosis. Anakinosis. A-N-A-K-A-I-N-O-S-I-S. It implies to re-educate, to remold, or renovation. To re-educate, to remold, or renovation. Ephesians 4.23 And be renewed, remolded, renovated in the spirit of your mind. From the plethora of texts we have examined so far, it is very evident that repentance takes place in the mind. No, it means the word metanoa, repentance, will mean to change your understanding. Or to change your thinking or to change your reasoning. Repentance, metanoa. To change your understanding, to change your thinking or to change your reasoning. It is not a change of behavior, but a change of understanding, which now affects the believer's behavior or conduct. Once your mindset changes, your lifestyle is affected. So it begins with changing your understanding in essence repentance to the believer is to renew his mind renew his thinking to re-educate his mind or the way he thinks with the written word repentance to the believer is to renew his mind or the way he thinks with the written word while repentance to the unbeliever is to believe in the gospel of christ not a feeling of regret or remorse or a change of conduct or attitude. But to believe in the good news of what Christ has done in his resurrection. That is repentance for the unbeliever. For the believer it is the changing of his thinking. The remolding and renovation of his thought pattern. So look at Revelation 2.5. Having done all of those exigencies. 
Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent. And repent. And repent. Which means and educate your mind. Renew your mind. Or renew the way you think. And do the first works. Or else I will come unto thee quickly. And will remove the candlestick out of his place. Except thou repent. Now there's another word there. That he, he used. He says I will come quickly. In actual fact. None of those churches exist anymore. They were real churches. They were physical churches. Those seven churches in Asia. But none of them is in existence anymore. So thinking this refers to the resurrection of the saints. What we call rapture. Because the moment you start thinking that what is dealing with here is rapture, it will lead you to error. We have already said the word repent is to change your thinking. Okay? To change your, 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 your thought process. To, to change your understanding. To renovate, to reconstruct your thinking. Alright? Now, remember that we said. So, this scripture is not dealing with the resurrection of the saints or the rapture. Notice, John used the word come and quickly. In referring to other churches too. Come and quickly. Let's look at it. Revelation 2.25 But that which you have already hold fast till I come. Revelation 2.16 Repent or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against thee them with the sword of my mouth. Revelation 3.3 3. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Revelation 3.11 Behold I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast that no man take thy crown. Come quickly. Notice in the third or four instances, he used the word hold fast. Hold fast. The word quickly was translated from the Greek word tako. T-A-C-H-O-O. Tako. The word quickly. All right? Which implies speedily. This supports what he said in the introduction of chapter 1. Revelation 1.1. 1, 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Things which must shortly come to pass. So the things the writer spoke about cannot in any way refer to salvation. Because in talking about salvation, in Revelation chapter 1 verse 5 and 6, he used past things and also made use of the word forever and ever. Then in Revelation chapter 22, he also used the word quickly. 22 verse 12 and 20. And behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. He which testifieth this thing saith, surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. The word and between the phrases, I come quickly and my reward is with me, was translated from the Greek chi. My reward is with me explains I come quickly. My reward is with me explains, behold, I come quickly. So he was not referring to loss of salvation at the resurrection of the saints, the rapture. Rather, he was referring to rewards. It is vital to observe that this is how he concludes the letter. You see? So it is safe to say that the entire letters to the seven churches were concerning rewards. The seven letters. Alright? Now, the word reward was translated from the Greek word mistos. M-I-S-T-H-O-S. Which implies a repayment. Literally or figuratively for service or having fulfilled a tax. Again, this cannot be salvation or loss of it. 
So everything he was saying to the seven churches had nothing to do with salvation, rather with works and reward. Look at the way Paul will use it very clear. Romans 4.4 4. Now, to him that walketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of death. If it is of reward, then it is not of grace. If salvation will be rewarded, then salvation is not of grace. And if it is not of grace, then it is not salvation. If it is not of grace, then it is not salvation. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 to 10. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them good works. So salvation is of grace, not of works. So therefore, the reward is not for salvation. The reward is for works of service and ministry. The work of ministry. Watch. So that's why he was speaking to the seven churches on reward, works, reward, works. So when he says repent, he was saying change your mind, change your thinking, reconstruct your thinking, reconstruct your thinking, and change your mindset. Look at Titus 3, 5. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done. But according to his mercy, he saved us. Glory to God. According to his mercy, he saved us. Hi -ya 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 -ya. We didn't get saved. He saved us. By the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. That is salvation. Salvation is God's work. Freely given to men in Christ. It is illogical to even think that God will reward what he has done that he has freely given why will he reward you for saving you so john himself clearly separated salvation from the rewards he spoke of clearly he first established salvation in revelation 1 4 5 6 then he now went on to write them the letters to deal with works and reward if it's clear, can I hear a good amen? amen? So, Revelation chapter 1 verse 5 and 6. Pay attention. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, watch salvation unto him that loved us. It's done work. And washed us. Already done. From all our sins in his own blood. Six. And hath made us kings and priests unto God and his father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. The question therefore will be, what reward was the writer talking about? I come quickly. And my reward is with me to give to every man. Reward. The epistles teach about rewards. First Corinthians 3, 8. Brother Paul will put it like this. Now he that planted and he that watered it are one. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Verse 14. If any man's work abide which he had built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Talking of ministry. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 9 and 10. We are for, we labor, that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he had done, whether it be good or bad. He's dealing with works and reward here. Colossians 3.24 Knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance. For you serve the Lord Christ. 
second john chapter 1 verse 8 look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought but that we receive a full reward now with this in mind i read revelation chapter 2 again verse 1 to 7 pay attention unto the angel of the church of ephesus right remember this church he has already told them they are washed they are loved and they are made kings and priests so unto the angel of the church of ephesus right this thing said he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks i know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and thou canst not bear with them which are evil and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and has found them liars and has borne and has patience and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted nevertheless i have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love thy first love remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent watch this and do the first works or else i will come unto thee quickly and will remove the candlestick out of his place except thou repent but this thou hast that thou hatest the deeds of the nicolaitans which i also hate he that had, had an ear let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches to him that overcometh will i give to eat of the free of life which is in the midst of the paradise of god i read again second john 1 8 look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought but that we receive a full reward this reward clearly is for service our labor for the lord and in his body not salvation every one of you in this church men women those of you watching online youtube in our campuses there is a reward for ministry and we serve and serve patiently painstakingly dutifully because we know that one of these days we must all appear before the judgment seat of christ to be judged for our works if the works are born to suffer loss so he was telling the church at ephesus obviously some of them had been distracted just like brother paul would say demas has forsaken me having loved this present world just like some of us can get so busy you're no more available for ministry you're so busy with businesses busy running around you don't have time for ministry you don't have time for service no time for evangelism you're so busy busy in the secular which has no eternal value at the expense of your eternal investment so he now tells them in ephesus to repent to change their minds look at romans 12 11 not slothful in business fervent in spirit serving the lord romans 12 11 the amplified puts it like this never lag in zeal and in earnest endeavor be aglow and burning with the spirit serving the lord first corinthians 15 58 therefore my beloved brethren be steadfast unmovable always abounding in the work of the lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the lord first corinthians 15 58 therefore my beloved brethren be firm steadfast immovable always abounding in the work of the lord always being superior excelling doing more than enough in the service of the lord doing more than enough pay attention doing more than enough in the service of the lord knowing and being continually aware that your labor in the lord is not futile it is never wasted or to no purpose first corinthians 15 58 i just read amplified let me read the asv we are for my beloved brethren be steadfast unmovable always abounding in the work of the lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the lord let me use the bbe 
a translation called the BBE. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. For this cause, my dear brothers, be strong in purpose and unmoved, ever giving yourselves to the work of the Lord. Because you are certain that your work is not without effect in the Lord. Hebrews 6, 10. For God is not unrighteous. Helabadaya. God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love which you have showed towards his name in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. Clearly, the above texts were written to those who already were saved. It is not written for people to believe. It's written for believers who are already born again, who are being equipped like I'm equipping you for ministry. To do the ministry with diligence. Don't let somebody's comment discourage you. Don't let somebody's behavior discourage you. Sometimes as we serve the Lord, people are going to speak things to discourage us. People are going to attack our character, attack our presence. You know, some of us have been through so much it doesn't matter anymore. You come to a place where you are dead to the praises of men and the criticisms of men. Where your focus, your eye is set like a flint. You know you are on an assignment of reintroducing Jesus to a generation that don't know him. Equipping believers to know who they are, what they have, and what Christ can do through them. You are so focused on the assignment. You are set on it. And you know that your reward is not in vain. And there are some of you in the place of service, people who misunderstand you and call you names. But you are not doing it for them. You are doing it to the Lord. So you are focused. You are not discouraged. You are not slagging. You are not lagging behind. You see? Your eyes are so focused. You are so determined. In and out of season. When you feel it, when you don't feel it. God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love which you have showed toward his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. Now, clearly, the text we just read are for people that are already saved. Look at 1 Corinthians 9.25. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now, they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we are incorruptible. Philippians chapter 4, verse 1. Therefore, my dear brethren, dearly beloved, and longed for my joy and crown so stand fast in the lord my dearly beloved paul was writing to philippi first thessalonians 2 19 for what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing and not even ye talking about souls the joy of every believer is to bring souls to the kingdom whether through the house through social media evangelism youtube the campuses, our joy or crown of rejoicing are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming. Second Timothy 4, 8. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. 1 Peter 5 1. The elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God ministry, which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucky, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. James 1.12 Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord had promised to them that love him. The word crown in the above text was translated from the Greek word Stephanos. Stephanos. S T E P H A N O S Stephanos, which is often used as an award for victory. It was used by the writer of Hebrews for Jesus 
in describing his resurrection from the dead. Hebrews 2 9. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. It was used metaphorically by Paul and James to describe the believer's reward by the Lord Jesus for his labor, his work, service in the body. It is different from the word diadema. Diadema. D-I-A-D-E-M-E. -E. It is also translated as crown by the King James Version of the Bible, which implies to designate royalty. It was used in the book of Revelation by John for Jesus. Revelation 19, 12. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no man knew, but he himself. The adjective used by Paul and James in describing the crown received by believers show that this reward does not refer to material possession, riches, or wealth. The re now, let me, let me just, Power City, listen to me quickly, all of you citizens. I came to a conclusion that if God's reward for me is car and houses, then God is not worth serving. Why? People like secular people who don't know Christ, they have cars and houses. That cannot be a reward mansions multi-billion dollar properties and they don't know christ so how will i be in ministry saving lives changing lives building believers equipping the saints and because of that going through trials persecution tribulation all kinds of sacrifices and then my crown will not be a car in a house no i don't need jesus to get houses and cars. I can get them through the secular ways. Like others get them. So our reward is not material. It's not riches or wealth. That's why I love the song. You are the Lord of my life. You are the hope that I cling to. You mean. More than this world to me. I wouldn't trade you. For silver or gold. I wouldn't trade you. For riches untold. You are. You are my everything. The believer's reward. Is not material. First Corinthians 9.25 To obtain a corruptible crown. But we an incorruptible on the line. We an incorruptible meaning it's not immaterial. The reward. Philippians 4 1. Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved, and longed for my joy and crown. So stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. Not immaterial. First Thessalonians 2 19. For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? And not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming. Second Timothy 4 8. There is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. A crown of righteousness. First Peter 5 4. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that faded not away. Faded not away. James 1 12. He shall receive the crown of life. Not immaterial. Incorruptible. Joy. Rejoicing. Righteousness. Glory. Life. So brother Paul will now say in 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know, that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. The word vain was translated from the Greek word kenos. K-E-N-O-S. Which implies something that is empty. Vanities. Kenos. Vain. This relates to material things. 
that our, our labor is not vanity. It's not material things. Our service in the Lord is not for material things. Power voices, ushers, protocol, our campuses, coordinators, men and women of God that are rising all over the globe to preach this gospel. Our reward is nothing material. That's why the greatest sacrilege is when a man of God gives believers the impression that when they give money, God will give them back. It doesn't make sense. What God gives back to us is immaterial. Ha, ya, 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 ya. Brother Peter would call it inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that faded not away, reserved for us in heaven, where thieves and robbers, according to Jesus, cannot break through. Ladies and gentlemen, the deception is because it is not material, you feel it will never come. Or you feel it may not be important after all because you have been trained to think car, house, money, tangible things. But you forget that this natural world is transient and little. The eternal world is eternal. That's why God's reward is permanent, eternal, everlasting. When you buy a car, after driving a few minutes, it has lost its value. What about a house? Get, leave a house for five years. It will be difficult for you to enter. What about money? Money doesn't last. You have a hundred million now after a while you're looking for more. Why? Because these things are transient. God rewards us with things that are of eternal value. And brethren, don't play with service. Don't play with ministry. Don't play with your commitment to the gospel and the advancement of the gospel through evangelism, through your giving, through your prayer, through your commitment to the vision. Let's flood the earth with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the water covers the sea. Glory to God. The phrase in the Lord. Know that your labor is not material things or in vain. In the Lord. The phrase in the Lord relates to his church, his body, fellow believers. And Paul had explained this earlier in previous chapters. First Corinthians 10, 16. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we be many are one bread and one body. And we are all partakers of that one bread. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. Verse 14. For the body is not one member, but many. 27 of the same 1 Corinthians 12. Now, you are the body of Christ, and members in particular. 28. And God has set some in the church. First, apostles. Secondly, prophets thirdly teachers after that miracles then gifts of healings helps governments and diversities of tongues he repeated the same in his letter to the church at ephesus ephesians 1 19 and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us what do we believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places Far above all principality and power and might and dominion. And every name that is named. Not only in this world. But also in that which is to come. And had put all things under his feet. And gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Which is his body. The fullness of him that filleth all in all. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 4. There is one body. One spirit. Even as you are called in one hope of your calling. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 30. For we are members of his body and of his flesh and of his bones. So coming with salvation, when we got born again, what came with the package of salvation is the love for the sins. There is such a love in the heart of every regenerated believer for the sins. We love the brethren. Yes, our hearts are so full of love for the brethren. There is no room for hate in the brethren. 
No room for hate in the believer. The believer is totally filled with the love of God. He is filled with the fullness of God. And God is love. No room for hatred. All right? So it came, the believer received love for the saints. Ephesians 1.15, look at it. We are for I also. After I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints. It's because you love the saints that you serve. I'm preaching because I love you. It is born out of love for me to serve you with my gifting. For me to serve you with my grace. For me to serve the body of Christ and serve believers with what God has graced me with. Even when I'm, even when I'm accepted and when I'm rejected, it doesn't make any difference. I'm too focused on the love of God in my heart to serve the body of Christ. Colossians 1.4 Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which you have to all the saints. Philemon 5 Hearing of thy love and faith which thou hast towards the Lord Jesus and toward all saints. The writer of the book of Hebrews reiterates the same thing in his epistle. Hebrews 6 9, but beloved, we are persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation, though we thus speak. For God is not unrighteous to forget your labor, your work and labor of love. Your work and labor of love. Your work and labor of love, which you have showed to us his name, in that you have ministered to the saints. And do minister. Serving the Lord therefore. Is serving in. And through his body. See. That's why you cannot just watch me on Facebook. And be satisfied. You must think of a campus. On YouTube. If you are in a city where there is no church. Where this message is preached. You must, you must think of starting one. On the power city. And get spiritual resources from me and be equipped to mobilize people to be taught the message so you become a lighthouse both on youtube facebook and even in this building some of you don't want to be house fellowship leaders but you've, you're eating fat your opportunity to share what you have learned remember the essence of teaching is so you can teach others the things that thou hast learned of me among many witnesses commit the same the same Copy and paste exactly. Commit the same unto others who will in turn commit to others. We equip you to do ministry so you can raise ministers to do ministry. That's the way the kingdom works. You can't keep eating and just sitting there and feeling good. The essence of ministry is ministry. All over this church, this ministry, our campuses, every one of you should strive to mature quickly so you can also raise other people. You know, one of the signs of growth is you become restless. You want to reach out. You want to, you know, bring more people and see them grow and disciple them. That is what true Christianity produces. The love to serve the brethren. The love to serve the brethren. So serving the Lord is serving in and through his body. No apostle, not even Jesus taught believers to expect material things, wealth, possession, as a reward for faithfulness in service. The materialism gospel is a major proponent of this belief system and is only prevalent in the minds of some believers who believe that God is building mansions and structures in heaven for them. And it comes as a result of lack of diligence in the study of God's word. Ladies and gentlemen, we must be people with eternity in view, men of eternal value. We must realize that we are just here for a while. One of these days, every one of us is going to stand before Jesus to account for what we use, the things we have learned, the things we are hearing, the Holy Ghost in us, God's anointing in us to do in this world. Souls all over the place without Christ. It's time to stand up and be counted. Stand on your feet and say with me very loud, everybody, it's my time to stand up and be counted. Say it again. I stand to be counted. Now say with me very loud. I declare today. I am a lighthouse. Where I am found. I am a lighthouse. 
where I am found. Now listen, I want to pray for you. Those of you on Facebook and YouTube, if you're in a place where there's no, no, no church like this to be taught the word, and you're feeding from me, automatically you are an extension of this church. All you need to do is reach our office, indicating where you are from, your phone number, and your desire to start a Power City campus. We will equip you and walk with you through it so that you become a lighthouse from where the things you are learning, others will feed from you all over the world. It's time to get busy. Jesus is coming quickly with his reward. It's time to get all hands on deck. The master's work demands haste. It demands haste. Go to the byways. Go to the hedges. Go to the bridges. Under the bridges. Go to the city, the villages. Let's spread this gospel all over the world. All over the world. The spirit of God is moving. And the glory of the Lord as the water covers the sea. Everyone in power city. It's time to get all hands on deck. Let's push this mandate to the ends of the earth. Thank you, my father. Lift your right hands. Father, I pray for everybody. That as we ponder on these realities. As we ponder on these truths. One day we will face you, Jesus. To give account of our stewardship. To give account of these things we are learning. I pray that everyone here will rise up to this challenge. I break barriers and obstacles. I command grace upon every hearer today. In the name of Jesus. And I decree that there's a burden and a commitment to this assignment. There's a burning passion in the hearts of your people. To get this world to flood the earth as the water covers the sea. Thank you for men and women that are rising in every continent. In every nation. In every city. In every state. Men and women rising in every village. In every hamlet. Across the nations of the world. Who are hearing this message. Understanding this message. And they are rising with a, a, a persuasion. To flood the earth. With the gospel of Christ. Who will say like brother Paul. I count all things as dung. For the excellency of Christ. I press forward. Towards the mark. Of the high calling of God. I thank you my father. And I declare for everybody hearing my voice today. Procrastination will not take the better half of the better part of you. You are blessed and kept. I decree that this glorious gospel will illuminate your world. You are blessed beyond the cause. You are kept by the power of God. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Glory to God. Listen to me. Those of you on Kingdom Life, YouTube, Facebook, if you're there and you want to be a part of what I just spoke about, you need to shoot a mail right now to Dr. Abel Damina at Yahoo. Dot com. Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. In our campuses, all the coordinators get the brethren to commitment to service. Right here in this house, every one of you, before we close today, the master's work demands haste. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. Oh my goodness, what a service. I know you've been blessed by the word of his grace. Please don't go away. Don't go away. The essence of the teaching of God's word is to build you up, equip you, so you can do the work of ministry. That's the whole essence. Not just to acquire knowledge and see that, but to teach you so you can teach others. Brother Paul says, the things that you have learned of me among many witnesses, the same you commit to others who shall also commit to others. Two things. Number one, if you don't belong to a Bible teaching church where the message of Christ is taught, where the revelation of Jesus is brought to you, then you either join one of our campuses or you can begin one in your community and become the lighthouse for other believers to assemble around and be fed and be taught the word. And today you want to join either a campus of ours or you want to start a campus, all you need to do is shoot me a mail, Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com with your details. We shall get in touch with you and we shall walk with you, equip you and train you. And we shall walk you through establishing a campus or being a part of one of our already existing campuses in your locality. Lastly, I've written a number of books to address doctrinal issues and to answer questions that you might have. They're on the screen right now. Today, if you require any of those books, you want to order for them or all of them, or you want to order for our CDs or DVDs, shoot a mail also to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com requesting for the materials and our office will get in touch with you and see how they can work out getting the books to wherever you are around the world. I'm excited that I'm able to be a blessing to you today. Remember, I'm live here on Facebook every morning 
at 10 a.m. GMT plus 1, 12 noon GMT plus 1, 6 p.m. GMT plus 1, and 10 p.m. GMT plus 1. Many times a day, feeding you, feeding you, feeding you, equipping you, because we want you to come to a place of robust understanding of an effective relationship between you and God. Share with other people as you look forward to continuing to be a blessing in your life. And until I see you in the next broadcast, enjoy the rest of your day and be blessed. Amen.